know, the sport's not about about fighting. It's about the life of a fighter. It's about what makes these people do what they do and makes them as tough as they really are. It's about what makes these people tick. I feel like I'm a better man of the sport because I think it gives me a good direction. It gives me a great future and, and I can help out other people and I like helping out people. You know, after a while, the sport dictates who you are. And for me, you know, it took me a long time to find myself, but you know, I'm, I'm happy to be where I'm at in life. Nothing's gonna stop me until I reach my goal. Grew up raising horses and the country life. I now I have a great family. I still stay close with them, go fishing and hunting with my dad. Uh, my dad loves this sport. <laughs> when Trevor got into the ultimate uh, cage fighting, I was a bit worried about it because uh, I didn't know nothing about it. Discovered the sport about two and a half years ago. Started training here at the Ultimate Training Center with Jacob Porras and JT Thomas, and we've had a bunch of good guys coming out of here. So I'm hoping I can do the same. Well, I think um, Trevor being smaller than the, most of his classmates and stuff really gave him the uh, goal to to try to compete with other people to try to be just as big as they are. I think that really gave him the competitiveness to go after. I'm a great competitor and I always like to be the best at what I can do. They call me Hollywood, and it's from high school where I got the original nickname because I was a showboater and a pretty boy all the time. Trevor's a young up-and-comer. He just turned pro. He's got a lot to learn, but he's also got a lot to show. He, he's going to be a young, great fighter at 145. Um, he's going to be hard to deal with because he's, he's short, he's aggressive, he's strong, and he's really athletic. So he's one of those guys that you're going to see hopefully do good in the sport. You know, I think that he has, he has a lot of potential, and we'll see how he, how he uses it. I'm really proud to see him, see him come this way, and it makes me happy to see him do good when he fights. I like the name Hollywood. <laughs> he's exciting, you know, he always he always brings the fight. He's always moving, you know, he'll continuously bring the crowd. We'll be able to see, now that he's pro, just, just what he's got and what he's made of. A lot of people, you know, they when I talk to them about what I do, uh, you know, they they get a misconception, especially the cage kind of gives a lot of people, you know, you're locked in there like animals. We do everything from boxing, wrestling, kickboxing, jujitsu, which is submission holds. Uh, the fights can end in any way as far as a knockout, a uh, person verbally saying, I'm done, I quit, I sum submit, or tapping out. If you Sometimes you might get caught in a submission hold. If you tap your hand, the ref will stop it. They see that. That's your way of saying I'm done. There's many different ways it can be stopped. A cut, the doctor, you know, just as in boxing, if you get your eye cut or whatever really bad, the doctor comes in and looks at it. It's not as brutal as you think it is. A lot of people think this sport's really brutal. Just people in there trying to kill each other. They're not. It's a safer uh, fight than uh, a lot of people think it is. It's, uh, people just look at a cage and they think there's just two animals in there going at it. But, it, but it's not really that way. It's two people that are, are good athletes and they're, they're uh, trained hard for this. There has never been a serious injury in this sport in the U.S. You have a ref right there who is sanctioned by the Boxing Commission. You have your corner. There's so many rules and regulations. If you're smart about it, it's very unlikely to get a very serious injury. If you, if you look, you know, you always hear about football players, concussions, and this and that. You might occasionally see a fighter get a broken hand or maybe break an arm. But out of so many fights, you barely hear that. You know, maybe one or two. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's not as bad so, as everybody thinks. Didn't know that there was much skill in it. The more I watch it, the more I watch it on TV, I see these guys are really athletes. There's a lot involved when you watch the guys rolling on the ground, the submission holds, it's 
kind of like a chess match. Every time I go for something, there's always a counter to it. Sometimes there's more than one counter to it. And they do their counter and I have to go to something else and we try to keep it flowing the whole time. So it's very, very technical sport. You got world-class athletes in there competing and getting after it where the tough man is just a local tough guy in the town. Go in there and box a little bit. When the sport first came out, the people promoting it were trying to promote it as no-holds-barred sports. I think because in the beginning there wasn't enough attention put into the, the sporting aspect of it and the promotions done around this type of a, an art were about human cockfighting. In the beginning, they promoted the bad side of what we do. And, and it's really, you can make anything look as good or as bad as you want to. It's just a question of how you promote it. And in the beginning, it was promoted poorly. And it's going to take a long time to get around that, that poor promotion. Unlike the tough man, and everything we do is sanctioned through the Boxing and Wrestling Commission. And they make all of our rules time limits of our rounds, weight classes, everything we do. The commissioner comes to all of our events, is there watching everything we do. They bring extra men that are in the back watching us tape our hands. When you get water in between rounds, it has to be a sealed bottle of water. They watch every move we make. In addition to the commission being there, for safety purposes, we have a doctor and two EMTs at every one of our events. You know, anybody gets injured in the cage, even if you don't, if you just get flash knockout, the doctor still comes in and checks you out before he lets any of your corner men anything, make sure you're all right. When we go into the back, there's an EMT back there, checks you out again, watches you for a little while, make sure the guys are fine. So we, we keep real close eye on our athletes. Before the event even starts, a doctor checks them out, checks their heart rate, pulse, everything, just to make sure they're healthy and ready to go. These are athletes, a lot of people believe that uh, these are street fighters coming in and, and that it's a, a brawl and really it's evolved into a sport and I like watching the discipline of it. A lot of people don't realize that I mean these people are training in gyms, they're training several hours a day, most days of the week, that they aren't going out there to throw haymakers like a bar fight, they actually have a strategy and a plan and once you get to know the sport you can see the finesse of the athlete that comes through that makes it really enjoyable to watch. What's mixed martial arts? It's a combination of uh, every art, stand-up, ground, everything you can think of wrapped up into one. You know, you need to be well-rounded today. You know, 10 years ago, you could get by with just being a, a really good jiu-jitsu guy. Today, you have to be extremely good on your feet, you have to know how to punch and kick and knee and you have to know how to take a person down to the ground and you, you need to know how to finish them off whether it be with strikes or a submission so uh, mixed martial art is pretty much what it says it's a mix of everything I come from a wrestling and boxing background growing up throughout high school wrestling and boxing and then one of my friends one time that I worked out with at, at the weightlifting center in Clown Falls said he's going to go do a cage fight. So I was like, hmm. He asked if I'd help him with wrestling and stuff. And so I said, yeah. We went and watched him do it up in Portland, Oregon. So I seen that fight and I was like, this is something I think I'd like to do. I like to compete. It's a good competitive sport. So coming from my background, I was like, I want to. I want to try to do this. First fight. Scariest thing I ever did. Well, almost. Uh, when they locked that cage door, it was a, quite a different experience. But you got nowhere to go, so you got to stay in there and fight. It's almost sick to your stomach. Once they sounded that bell and the first few punches going, I wasn't scared no more. Afterwards, I decided I got to get into training. I'd never trained, really, like I train now, I train hard. I was never in shape, and I realized you got to be in shape for this stuff, so I knew I had to do something about it, so I got over here to Medford, Oregon, and started training. I've been doing great ever since. A lot of injuries come in practice. Like, I've had my nose broke in practice. I've had injuries in my, my knees my elbows from arm bars, leg bars, just things in practice. But in a fight, the only injuries that I've had in a fight are my 
as a broken nose, a broken hand. I don't know if my ribs were broke, but they, they were hurt for quite a while. Kicked pretty hard in the ribs and had a tooth knocked out. I've hurt pretty much everything, but I've only had two broken bones so far. And that's it's pretty good, I think, for this sport. I've only had two broken bones. Second fight, no, it wasn't as bad. I knew, I knew what to expect. I fought here in Medford, Oregon, and I won. I was in the UCF, and that was my first first win. I lost my first fight, so I won my second one, and it was the best feeling in the world, on top of the world. So I knew it was something I wanted to do, and been training hard at it ever since. I've been in there enough now. It's just feels natural, and I have more fun in there, and get to try more things. Yeah, it's dangerous. I used to bull ride, and I think bull riding is more dangerous than this sport. I think I got more hurt bull riding than I ever have in this sport. It seemed like every time I got bucked off a bull, it hurt way more than sometimes in here. But I, this sport's fun. I love it. It's where my heart's at. So. I uh, watched the, the pros fight. Uh, all the big UFC fighters fight. I've never seen anybody seriously hurt. Uh, the most serious one was Silva getting his arm broke. You know, it's been a legal sport now for 10 years and nobody that I know has gotten seriously hurt. You know, you get your broken hands, you know, every once in a while you might blow out a knee, something like that, but nobody's died, I know that. I have not seen anyone get really hurt in fighting yet. Um, Usually that's why we have a doctor and that's why we have a ref here. No, there has been no death in MMA yet. I'm the, the attending physician at the fight. If there's a professional fight, then the, it's mandated by the boxing commission that a physician be present. For amateurs, you have to have the equivalent of uh, an EMT present. If, he, if he's able to defend himself still, I'm gonna let him fight. I'm gonna let him try to, try to win the fight. I wanna leave it up to the fighters, but if he cannot defend himself intelligently, then I'll, I'll call the fight. Uh, the physician basically has absolute power over if the fight continues or ends based on their their clinical judgment. I've called uh, several fights actually, if, uh, especially in the lower ranks, if they are no, non-professionals, I don't let them go as far as, if a, if a cut is open, uh, meaning that it's deep and, and flowing blood and we can't control that, I stop that immediately. If it's uh, a professional fight, we let them go further, of course. Uh, if I go out and I question the person and they can't, they aren't oriented to the time or place, some of the other questions we ask about consciousness, if they aren't passing that sufficiently to my satisfaction, the fight's over. And, and with cage fighting, there's a fight every weekend almost it, nationally and still no deaths. So that tells you the difference right there. I believe that uh, given the chance, if people educated themselves on the mixed martial arts uh, fighting, that it would be more enjoyable than, than boxing. I find it that way at least. Boxing definitely is, is a more dangerous sport because uh, you're looking at cumulative punches over a long period of time. You're getting hit in the head, you know, literally hundreds of times in a, in a match. Where in here, uh, you know, if you're if you're taking too many shots, you got the opportunity to take the guy to the ground and, and prevent that. Um, the other thing about between boxing and, and, and uh, the mixed martial arts is. If, the, if you get in trouble and you're in a position where you're, you know, you're going to get hurt, you just tap. In boxing, you don't, there is no tap. The, the corner can throw the towel in, but generally you don't see that. Kickboxing is the same way. So between the three, actually mixed martial arts is, is a safer way to go. Muhammad Ali's been hit in the head a lot, which that's another reason I say boxing is a lot worse than this sport. Those guys stand there and they punch each other. They stand toe to toe and that's all they do. They punch each other in the head. And every once in a while they might get hit in the body, but you know, our sport, somebody's hitting me hard, I'm gonna shoot and take the fight to the ground where whether I'm on top or on bottom, you can't throw as hard a punch. You don't get to put all the power and weight into it. So it's a lot safer for us. And you'll see some fights where there might be one or two punches thrown and it's a submission match on the ground. They're rolling and rolling and rolling. The guys don't get hurt. One of my favorite fights, um, I think they threw two punches for 20 minutes, but it was a very technical submission match, just like a great chess match. They were one submission hold after another. They don't have his experience of punchers. I don't believe they get the power 
benefit of an experienced boxer does. However, they can you can grab the man and hold on to protect yourself. Or in boxing, you're left kind of out in the open to fend for yourself. As you know, there's uh, some dementia that has been related to, to boxing. Boxing has deaths, I don't know how many a year, at least 10, I'm sure is the average. Um, so much trauma to the brain here, you know, if a referee thinks you had enough, he will he will call the fight. In, in boxing, you get a standing eight count and get another chance to get beat up on some more and more trauma to the brain. Here, if you get knocked out, chances of you fighting another show for six months are really slim. If, if the doctor thinks that uh, you shouldn't, he'll medically suspend you. I did a little fighting when I was younger. I fought as an amateur, and his grandfather was a boxer in the army. So I think maybe it's in his blood, I don't know. <laughs> Cage fighting, uh, I thought was more dangerous than boxing, but uh, the more I watch it, um, I don't think so because in boxing, like I've seen guys get beat to a pulp and they just sometimes let it go too long. Too many fights, too many head blows. I've actually seen people killed in boxing. I would say the sport's a lot safer than boxing. You watch many boxing fights where a man gets dropped, they get a 10 count to get back up, and uh, they're still dazed and getting punched a bunch more and they might get dropped again and go through that same thing three or four rounds of doing that, where our sport, if I get dropped and I land on the ground and I'm not bringing my hands up and ready to defend myself, it's over. If I hit and roll over slow, the ref's stopping it. They don't let it go very far. They really protect us. Boxing has had over 100 years to become what it has become. This has had 11, and it is already far beyond boxing. In the next five years, who, who's going to want to watch this boxing when you, when you can watch mixed martial arts? Every aspect of fighting and uh, better knockouts. When you, who wants to watch a fight that's going to go 12 rounds? You know, I mean, that's, that's not as exciting as a mixed martial arts fight. There's, there's more drama, there's more action in a mixed, mixed martial arts fight, especially with the rules today. I still get nervous because he's my son. I still get nervous, but um, I don't get as nervous as I used to because I know that he's uh, growing in this sport. So that, that helped me feel a little more at ease, you know, watching this. Well, if I was to tell people, you know, it's just a sport. It's just like two basketball players going out, you know, they'll be buddies before and after the, the game, then they go, you know, play basketball for, you know, an hour. And it's it's just the same. We, we you know, go in there, kick the crap out of each other, and we'll have a beer afterwards. So, uh, you know, it's just a sport. It's not barbaric. There's a lot of rules. Um, it's closely sanctioned. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's very, you know, mild as to what people think. If you want to get technical, you know, you look at the amount of damage or, or injuries that are sustained in this type of a sport, compare it against something else. Compare it to bull riding, for God's sake. I mean, these guys are mounting up on a 2,000-pound bull and letting the thing gore them, in some cases, to death. Is that a sport? It's called a sport because it has a big enough following. Trevor rode bulls for a while. You got an animal that just stomp the crap right out of you, you know, and uh, gore you with a horn or something. I'm glad he moved on to this sport instead of bullfighting. Professional wrestling is just, everybody knows now, it's fake. Um, those guys are great, great, great athletes. I mean, the stuff they do, the flips off the ropes, I mean, they're just amazing athletes. And do that day in and day out, it's it's tough. But, you know, it's it's also scripted. So where this, you know, it's not. It's go in, the best man wins, the best man leaves. So, you know, it's in the athletic, you know, ability. You know, it's probably the same, but this is real. I, I got beat up worse in college wrestling than I do in the cage. So it's, it's not that bad, yeah. Here, you know, you're, you protect yourself more. Uh, where in wrestling, you know, uh, the hardest hit I've ever taken is two people shooting in, headbutting each other. You know, and here, you know, I know I'm going to get hit, so I'm, I'm expecting it, you know, I'm dodging, I'm blocking. Well, there I wasn't. So I've actually, I get banged up more often fighting, but my worst injuries have been wrestling. And so people like, you know, they love fighting. I mean, who, 
Who doesn't love fighting? I, I, I've been to fights and I've seen old women uh, on their feet screaming and yelling. So, I mean, it's, it's an awesome, it's an awesome show. The sport is growing. It's the fastest growing sport in the world right now. Japan, it's huge. In America, we might get 20,000 fans at a fight. Japan, they get 50 to 60,000 fans. I get people coming up to me all the time wanting my autograph after every fight. And it feels the best when you get little kids coming up wanting your autograph and picture. That, that makes me feel the best signing autographs for little kids because I know how I felt when I once was a kid. And I try to be the nicest person to the kids and fans because without them we're nothing. And I, I believe that this is uh, taking over boxing and it's doing it quickly because it's becoming mainstream and more and more people are being able to watch it on TV and more and more people are, are have friends that are in it and so they're, you know, they're taking interest in the watching their friends. It's blowing up, it's going crazy. It's, uh, I see it surpassing uh, boxing and kickboxing. In the real, we're in the future right now, the way it's going. It's really exciting, especially when you're involved in the sport. And these guys are entertainers. People spend $20, $25 for a ticket. Well, that's what they spend for a concert ticket, too. And, and they go to a concert to be entertained. This is, just isn't a fight. This is entertainment. Jacob Porce is my manager, and he does a good job of looking out for me, his fighter. I've been working with these guys and training these guys for the past couple of years and the dream for me is to see guys like Trevor Harris or Matt Holt, guys that we coach, Josh Haynes, Devin Cole, make it in the big show and we've got some of the guys that are there now and it, you know, that's what puts a smile on my face. I love him as a coach, he's been the most influential guy in the sport for me. He's done more for me than pretty much anybody in my life, he's done, he's went out on a limb for me and saved my rear and got me where I am today and I'm very thankful for that. I think he's a great coach because he'll take what you're best at and work on that. He's a great wrestler and I'm not a great wrestler and he's helped me out on wrestling. He helps me out on my weak skills too if I'm getting ready for a guy that's going to be wrestling and we'll do a lot of wrestling drills to help me get ready for individual fighters. Before I, I moved to Portland, I trained here in Medford. And, you know, besides Portland, Medford's probably got one of the best gyms in the area. I mean, it's hard to find a good gym. And you find a place to train that's going to redefine you as a human. And I'll tell you, it's uh, since I've been at Quest, everything in my life has changed as far as how I train and what I do and what I expect out of the sport. The state sanctioned us, and there's weight classes, 145-pound weight classes, 155-pound, 170 185, 205, and then heavyweight is anything above 205 up to 260. And the amateurs, especially the first four fights, I think conditioning is the biggest part of winning these fights. Most of the guys don't quite know how to get there yet, aren't in good enough shape. They get tired and get caught in a submission hold, not because they don't know how to stay up, they're just too tired to defend it. So we really focus on our guys getting them in good enough shape to where that doesn't happen to them. The sport is growing, and it's growing fast. I mean, if you're going to get in, now's the time. In the next five or ten years, things are going to change so much that the opportunity is going to be fewer and further between. It's kind of like boxing. There's so many different organizations now. We have our own organization, which is called the UCF. There's good pay for professional fighters. The guys at the top get paid. Everybody else kind of gets by, you know. But again, it comes down to what you want. I mean, you know, you've got to know where you're going and set a plan in place. And uh, you know, I want to get those big paydays. I got a wife and I got kids that depend on me to provide for them, and that's how I do it. Is is through this sport, and um, I'm fortunate to get to do something that I love to do and get paid for it. And uh, every time I win, and every time I, I, you know, step in that cage and I perform well, I get a little bit closer to the bigger paydays. It's a big range there of where the fighters can go, but there is money to be made in the sport. It, it starts off on a small scale from pros that compete in our fights make $1,500 to $2,000 all the way up to the UFC pays guys $300,000 for a fight now. The bigger name fighters are starting to pick up good sponsorships worth over a million dollars now. So, You know my sport was wrestling like I was saying before. This is the closest thing to professional wrestling I can get. Um, I wasn't good enough to make the Olympics or anything like that, so it's just the next stepping stone of, you know, competing. And I, you know, I'm fortunate enough to be able to make it as, as my career.
I would say to the average person that thought they might want to fight, I would recommend them going and finding a good gym, watching for a few days a week, slow, take it slow, getting in there and make sure it's a sport that you want to do. It's not for everyone. It's, you know, you, you don't grab your friend and say, hey, you want to go down to the park and beat each other up. It's not like basketball. You know, you grab your buddies and you go to the park and play some three on three or four on four. You, you can't do that with this sport. If you're out of shape, it's not fun. It's practice is hard. When you if you take a month off, it it's hard getting get back in here and getting in shape. It's it's a fun sport. This the fun is when you get your hand raised after you've been busting your butt for two months. That's when it's fun. All this stuff down here is not fun. It's work. Basically, you have to get your medical records done. Uh, which is blood test, HIV, hepatitis, all that. Go to a, an eye doctor, get your eyes checked. Um, fill out all that, and then the boxing commissioner has to approve it. So that usually requires you to have, just depends on the person, the athlete, how you are. But I would say, you know, five, at least five amateur fights. And there's different organizations, just like in boxing. So... Pride is one of the big organizations, which is in Japan, and the UFC is in the United States. A lot of the kids that I work with uh, have a past. We all have a few skeletons in our closet, but this this is such a, a unique opportunity for kids like that to come into a controlled environment and, and, and do something like this and, and better themselves and, and put it into a different perspective instead of doing it on the street. You know, they can do it to uh, make themselves feel better, maybe to help some kids along the way. Uh, and that, I do a lot of that. I do a lot of mentoring with, with young men. Um, well, I was training, uh, you know, part-time. Uh, I was fighting professionally, but training part-time because I was also a carpenter here in town working, you know, an eight-hour day. So I'd run in the morning and then go to a two-hour practice at night. But like I said, I just now made a break you know I'm, I'm ranked high enough making good enough money fighting where i can actually do it full time which means i'm not fighting full time it's not an eight hour job right. you know i'll train five six hours a day and that's including running technique actual sparring and lifting weights train hard you know dedicate all your time to it that's what i did i mean i worked a nine to five i worked two jobs but i still trained in every free minute i had it's one of those things that demands all your attention or none at all you can do it as a hobby that's great but uh if you want to if you want a career out of this if you want a profession it's not a hobby and you got to treat it like any other job train hard condition hard and do what you have to do move you know live in another city another state so there's one two three four five six seven there's nine fights tonight and the main event is holt and vedonic all fights will be three three-minute rounds with a one-minute break. Um, please make sure when you come out there to the cage that you come with your mouthpiece, gloves obviously, tape over your gloves, okay? No wrestling shoes and your cup. Don't forget to bring your jock strap and a cup. You can have three people to your corner. Make sure that your cornermen bring a towel and water. A towel so that you can wipe up anything on the mat and when you're giving the guy water, try not to get it all over the place, okay? Submissions, all submissions are legal, except for, come here, small joint manipulation, you know, you cannot grab two fingers, one finger, you must at least grab three fingers. Uh, another big one is kicking straight into the knee. Don't do that at all. Kick out, you can kick in, you can kick up, whatever, obviously don't kick to the groin. If you're on your back, you can kick to an up the opponent. But if I got anything down, if I got a hand down, a finger down, I am now down. He cannot kick me. So, you know, the smart thing to do would be be down here. Don't get kicked in the face. You'll go to sleep pretty easy. Do not elbow him in the face. So stay away from the forearms of the face. Keep your hands clear of his throat like this. Okay? No, no rapo chokes. Obviously no biting. No eye gouging. Keep your fingers away from holes they shouldn't be in. Uh, stay away from the back of the back of the head. Okay. Do not hit them back here. From here to there, up and down. Do not hit. If you got mount on the guy and you got his back, 
and you, you want to hit them, that's fine. Do not come straight down, east, west. Same thing with elbows to the body. They need to be coming like this, nothing north, south, okay? Uh, oh, those freaking Gracie kidney kicks. Watch, kidney guard. You know what I mean? Do not do this. Kicking them in the liver. You cannot do that. Yeah, if you're going to pick someone up and slam them, do not spike them on their head. Uh, if you foul somebody and they can't continue, they win. Uh, if I tell you to break, go to your corner and break. Don't keep fighting or you'll get disqualified. If, after you guys are done uh, fighting, make sure you guys both come out to the middle. I can raise someone's hand. Another, another big one is when the guy's shooting in on me, I can throw a knee. But if he's got, again, if he's got a hand down, anything down, I cannot knee him in the head. Okay, but if he's shooting in on me and he's going to a knee, bam. That's his own fault. You can knee him. Okay, but no knees to the head on the ground. All right, this is Jason Gutches right here. He's going to be the doctor. Okay, if he comes in, no one else is to come in. So he comes in and that's his call. He makes the call whether you continue. I give them some basic etiquette on what to do if they are cut. Firstly, just for my safety as much as anything, I have them look forward when I come up to exam. I can exam from the side so blood splatter doesn't get on me. Uh, I also tell them a uh, common misconception is when they get a bloody nose, they they tend to hold it back and let it drain into the sinuses. Bring the, bring the head forward, let it drain, put some pressure on it. Oh, and also they have the cornermen bring Vaseline to the to the side so that they can Vaseline over areas that look like they may cut or are indeed cut to, to slip the grab of the of the gloves and the mat. Active on the ground, I'll stand you up. And if you take someone down and you're in their guard and you're not throwing punches or anything, I'm gonna stand you up. If I'm thinking about stopping the fight, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll, I'll say, bottom guy, you need to protect yourself. If I say that, I'm thinking about stopping the fight. And if you just have a reaction, I won't stop the fight. I'll, I'll give you, you know, I'll let you take a beating. So just try your hardest to fight back. Any other questions? All right, we'll see you guys. Fight start at eight. All right, you guys. Actually, a common foul that new guys um, that come in seem to do is action. Sometimes, sometimes they're so nervous that they they they're so tense that they don't want to fight as hard. So what I like to do, um, especially with amateurs in, in three minute rounds, is make them fight. So if they're on the ground, uh, they're they're here to entertain. So I want to make them stand up and fight as much as possible. Now, if they're working on the ground and they're fighting on the ground, go ahead and let, again let them fight. You know, but I, I don't want no no laying laying around. I want I want action. I mean, they got three rounds, three minutes. Anyone should be able to do that. So I want the crowd to get what they came for. You know, most of these guys, we work out and condition so much that you, you don't have to get on a strict diet. You know, stay away from fried foods, eat, eat meats and vegetables. That's about it. You know, I try to just say, hey, you know, restaurants, eat at home. It's with as much as we work to not be lean. I, I don't smoke, chew tobacco. I don't really like beer. It hurts me too much. It's hard to wake up. I like to wake up and run every morning or something. And it's hard to do it after you. For me now, two beers, it, it hurts me. Has no place, no place. Too many of these guys, you know, even at the top, spend a lot of time partying, you know, drugs, drinking, alcohol. It's got no place. If you're serious about what you're doing, let it go, man. Cause it's gonna do nothing but tear you down from the inside out. It's, um, it's not a question of, of can you or should you do it. It's a question of what you want out of life. If you spend so much time perfecting yourself and turning yourself into something greater than you are, but you go out and you drink and party on the weekends and you tear yourself apart from the inside, what good are you doing? You'll never make it in the end. In the end, it'll take you apart. And uh, nah, man, in my mind, that has no place in the sport. Not at all. <laughs> Don't do drugs. I mean, plain and simple. You know, you can't say it any cleaner than that. Um, a lot of people will, you know, succumb to that peer pressure. Back off. It's not worth it. You know, there's nothing there that you can't experience in life without those drugs. Show the world what you're made of because uh, it's a battle you can't win if you start drinking and doing drugs. They're having a hard time in practice where they're acting tired. I joke them, hey, you're not, you're not doing anything, smoking any cigarettes or anything because I know you're in better shape than this. And I try to keep it here at the, at the gym. I try to make sure everybody, even the guys that do drink beer at night at home, whatever, 
that we don't talk about it here. You know, it's I, I don't put anybody down for doing it or smoking or anything else, but I just would rather not talk about it here. I want it to be a clean, healthy environment. Maze. Oh. <laughs> Trevor Harris, he fought a couple times with not much training at all and realized that this is something he wanted to do, and so he moved over here to get more coaching. He's a good kid, man. I like Trevor. He's uh, I've trained with him quite a bit, actually. He's uh, he's a great guy. He's wiry, he's scrappy, he's tough. You know, um, he's done exactly what I said. You know, he moved down to the Medford area to train with some guys that were better than what he was getting where he was. And he's doing all the right things to try to make things better for himself. So, you know, he's he's got a bright future if he can stay focused. And I, I really believe he can do that if he decides that's what he wants to do. People have always loved Trevor. He, he He's good nature around everybody. Uh, but I've seen um, when he gets in the ring, he, he lets it all go. Uh, you know, he don't have that good nature in the ring. I think everybody has a good side and a bad side to them. And <laughs> I mostly try to be good. So, oh, this time I'd be bad though. Uh, I'm bad in the cage. <laughs> That's why I got this machine one here on my right arm. It's like a machine when I hit people. <laughs> it knocks them out. So. That's why I got that one on that arm. And the cross is, uh, I guess, my good side. I believe I have a good side. I believe in God, so <laughs> there's my good side. <laughs> I try to be a nice guy. I, that's when I get in that cage. That's my job. That's what I do. I don't get mad. It's a, it's a competition, you know. I'm, I don't want to make any enemies. I'd rather be friends with everybody. And I think that's one good thing about the sport. Pretty much everybody, even if you got to fight each other, you're still pretty much friends. We can shake hands and have a normal conversation. And I think that's one good thing about the sport is everybody's pretty much that way. Okay. Stay pretty good friends. My typical fights last about a minute or two. They're usually pretty short. I usually knock everybody out, but I've had some I've had some that uh, have went fifteen minutes before and that's tough. I have the mindset of going in and doing the full fifteen minutes every fight. That's why I do heavy cardio, so I'm, I'm built to go that long, built to go the distance, but I only plan on going a minute or two. <laughs> I think I got a pretty good chin. I think I can take a great punch. So I'm, I'm not fear of getting hit in the face. I don't care about hitting, hitting the face or the head, but body shots, never more different story. Body shots hurt. Uh, like I tell everybody, I can take a punch in the face and the head all day, but you hit me in the body and it's gonna hurt. <laughs> That's my, that's my weak points, my body, but I think it's anybody's weak point. Body shots hurt people bad, but I've been hit here in practice and out in the cage by heavy shots and it hasn't knocked me out yet, so I feel confident taking punches. That's why I like to stand up and fight. I think people can hit me hard and I can take it, but I can hit them hard enough to knock them out, so I've had six knockouts. I've had a couple rear naked chokes, a couple guillotine chokes. <laughs> that little guy, he's like a little monkey. He's so athletic. I mean, I don't know if you guys seen it, but, uh, you know, it's actually, he's had two fights now where he's won. He's climbed up on top of the cage, got it back the, off the top of the cage and landed in the middle. I've never seen anybody do it, you know. It, when they, up here, they're setting up the lights. I've seen him get up on top and actually walk the top of the cage. I mean, that guy, he is just amazing. And he's new at it, new at the sport. He's, he's going to go a long ways at this. He has the heart. He has the athletic ability. If he just stays focused, keeps practicing, keeps learning, I think he will. You know, the only, the only thing that's going to stop him is himself, is if, you know, he decides not to do it. His only Achilles here, Hill right now is his experience. He's just got to get more, more uh, fight time, more, you know, cage time and keep learning. And that's, that's all anybody can do is just keep learning, keep learning. You're going to lose sooner or later. And uh, you got to take that loss in stride and learn from it and just keep going. Nobody's invincible. Everybody's going to lose one point or another and focus on the, the good. And I try to believe that my game plan is going to work. I don't worry about what they're going to do. I focus on my game plan and go out there and believe I'm going to win the whole time. If I come up a loser, you know, it's not that big of a deal. I start over and look at what, where I made my mistakes and try to go from there. Ah, I wake up at about 8 o'clock in the morning, try to get a little breakfast in me, and then go. I like to eat oatmeal every morning. Oatmeal and a banana, some milk, orange juice. And then we head off to do a heavy cardio workout for about 45 minutes to an hour. And then if I'm still feeling pretty good, I'll do some weightlifting. And then go eat another meal after that. 
go get a fruit smoothie that's good for you and uh, a breakfast burrito or something. Some days I'll have the burrito, sometimes I'll have the chicken and rice. And then go home and take a nap, get rested up. I get back here down around five o'clock at the training center to train till, till eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night. We help out some of the younger guys earlier in the day when they come down. And then fight training starts pretty much at seven and we go hard from seven to whenever we're done. And we do heavy training Monday through Friday and we're gonna start doing Saturdays. You know, just train hard, man. Train hard and, and really decide what you want. Set some rules for yourself, you know, some things that you live by. And uh, you use those rules to dictate how you're going to perform. If you've got a weak rule set, you're going to have a weak turnout in your life. But if you've got strong, valid rules, and you live by those rules, and you do what you say you're going to do every time, you got a bright future. It's just a question of what you want. It takes a certain person to um, get in there and do this. You know, put this all on the line. It takes a certain person to, to train every day, um, especially, you know, the amateurs, they don't, they don't get paid for it. A lot of them have families. You gotta be born a gladiator or a fighter. You aren't just made one day a fighter. You, you're always a fighter in your heart. Look at the way they walk. Look at the way they carry themselves. You know, a fighter, a true fighter, they're gonna have a little bit of humility. And they're gonna be humble. And they're gonna be laid back. It's the guys that are new to the sport that are cocky and aggressive and mean and loudmouth. A fighter, in my experience, is somebody who, who you can look at and they got an air of confidence about themselves, but they're not cocky. All the guys I know at the top of the game, they're mellow. They're not cocky. They're, they're pleasant people, really. And uh, to me, you know, you can look at guys after a while and you just know you're looking at a fighter. It's just like looking at anybody that does any kind of sport that's intense and knowing that that person does something than, other than a normal 9 to 5. Because you can look at them and say, that person has an interesting life. Once, once the cage door clicks and they say, are you ready to fight? You're, you just got to switch and you got to be ready. It's a mind game. You know, some people can play it real well and some people can't. And for me, in order to get through that moment, that's when, when I need to turn the switch, you know, and that's when I get angry. It's, uh, it's just how I get by. Some people have a good time with it. Some people laugh. Some people smile. I'm fueled by rage when I fight, you know. It's just what gets me through because I don't think I could do it any other way. First thing that goes through your brain, I would say, would be to hope to perform to your best and entertain the crowd. I fight angry. You know, I do. I I put every bit of everything I have into into what I have to do at that moment. And, um, you know, there's been cases where I've had to fight friends, but, you know, when the door closes, we're not friends. It's business. You don't want to win uh, in a bad way. You can't feel good about yourself if you win in a bad way or and you don't perform great. You want to have a good performance where people can remember. You want to have a fight where people are going to go home that night and, and be jazzed up and, and talk about it days and day and sometimes months and, and, and even years later. You remember that fight back then? Um, you know, being a high school coach and being involved in wrestling for 30 years, it's exciting for me because this venue has brought uh, a lot of wrestlers out and uh, given them a place to go. I mean, um, other than the, the professional wrestling, which which is a stage event, you know, predetermined, uh, this is the real deal. If you follow the mixed martial arts, not not just statewide, but nationally and, and worldwide, and these events uh, such as like UFC, Pride in Japan, uh, Valley Tudo in Brazil, the guys that are dominating and, and, and are, most of them that are at the top have wrestling backgrounds. So it's, uh, it's exciting for me to see that. It's not easy, but nothing worth having is. You know, if it's something you want, then you got to make it happen because nobody's going to do it for you. You know, it's it's not really a question of whether you can or can't do it. It's about how much you want it. To win, yeah, it takes the determination. It takes a lot of heart. Um, my guys, I look for I, guys that I'm going to get involved in the sport as far as competing. Um, I'm looking for a certain type of attitude. I could take a guy off the street that's a basic street fighter that doesn't have a lot of experience 
you know, in, in fighting, but is just a, a tough kid street fighter and bring him in in a short time and have him beating a black belt, a second degree black belt that's been doing his uh, karate, kung fu, whatever, for six or seven years. So the belt systems don't mean a lot in this sport here. It's, it's uh, you know, are you, are you tough enough to, to get knocked down two or three times and get up and finish a fight? But it, it definitely, you know, helps to have some experience, whether it's boxing, kickboxing, wrestling, submission. I think, you know, we are who we are based on how we grew up. And uh, more than anything, I think that the way I grew up dictates how I perform in that ring in the sense that I, I won't quit. There's nothing in my person that's going to dictate I quit. You can, you know, do your damnedest to try to stop me. And you might stop me, but you won't break me. And I think that's what my childhood, my childhood's about. Is uh, just made me strong enough to endure the hard times. Definitely, you, it, you need to have a strategy when you come into an event like this, and you've got a guy that's going to fight another guy. Say he's a, a wrestler and he's got a lot of experience in wrestling, that's his background, then you're gonna probably wanna try to keep the fight on your feet. If you're comfortable with your striking and kicking, you're not gonna wanna go to the, to the ground with a with wrestler. Uh, vice versa, if you're in, in with a fight with a guy that's known to be a, a good striker or kicker, then uh, the strategy would be to get him on the ground and try to finish him on the ground. So it's knowing your opponent, knowing his strengths and weaknesses, and uh, capitalizing on on the weaknesses. You wrestle. You're in high school, you wrestle your ass off. You go to wrestling practice every day and you get as much out of that sport as you possibly can. Because you know a good base, a good wrestling base will take you a long ways. And it's something you can't teach somebody overnight. Go to a boxing gym. Learn some you know basic boxing skills. If you can really get your hands going and learn how to wrestle on the ground, there's nobody that's gonna stop you. And that's, you know, I spent a lot of my time trying to make up for holes in my game because of things I didn't do in the beginning. As soon as you're out of high school, move, man. Move away. Go bust tables in some freaking city so you can train at a world-class gym. Because if you want to make this sport happen, you're only as good as your trainers and your training partners. And, uh, you know, a lot of people in, in the backwoods towns will take your money and swear they're going to make you a world champion and hang you out to dry. I, I think if you have in your mind going into the cage that you're going to lose, you're going to lose. So I always think I'm going to win. I always prepare my winning speech. <laughs> Thanking the people that got me there. I lived in a buddy's basement for six months before I got established in Portland. You know, my wife and kids were 300 miles away, and I was commuting back and forth once a week just to see my family. My last fight was up in Corvallis, Oregon, and the guy I had to fight, I've known him for a little bit, and yeah, before the fight even happened, we were back there while I'm in the warm-up room talking with each other, carrying on a normal conversation 10, 15 minutes before the fight. And then we had to go out there and fight and broke both each other's noses in the first round, had a bloody war, and, <laughs> and then after the fight, we shook hands and had hugs, and we were great friends again. I still see him at every fight, and I still great friends. That's one thing I like about it. It's just funny how we were talking and BSing before the fight, being friends like normal, and then we have to go to the cage and do our job. But it was considered a draw. So I guess nobody is a winner, nobody is a loser. But we both had a broken nose. <laughs> how can you how can you fight a person and not love that person at the end of the day? I mean, you go into these fights with no animosity, no aggression really towards the ill will of the other person until that cage door closes. As soon as it opens, it's gone. It's um, really, it's probably the closest thing you can get to an intimate, you know, encounter with another human being behind, besides, you know, making love, really. I mean, you, you, share, you, you share sweat, aggression, I mean, intensity. It's, it's an intense sport. And when it's over, you're happy it's over. I mean, you're, you're damn happy it's over because it's a long 15 minutes. But you're also, you know, you, you get this release of endorphins and adrenaline and just intensity that you don't normally feel. You, you can't experience it outside of the cage. And that's really what hooks these people into the sport is, is that feeling that you only get when you win or when that fight's over because you can't feel it any other time in your life. 
And um, it's a shared experience. You know, had that person not agreed to climb in the cage with you, you never would have had that experience. And I think that it brings you close. I made some of my best friends fighting. And, uh, you know, believe it or not, before I started this sport, I didn't have any friends. I had none. I was a loner. You know, I, I wasn't happy at all. But since I've been fighting, you know, my life has completely changed because I found who I am. And in finding myself, I found a lot of other like-minded people. First off, I'll stretch out, get on the treadmill, and I like to see how fast I can run a mile. I try to better myself running that mile every day. And I try to do it under seven minutes every day. I'm down to like 6.30 now, so I'm trying to get under six minutes and 30 seconds on every mile. And then I'll slow the speed down and run for 15 more minutes after that. And I'll do a stair climber workout for 30 minutes. And we do intervals of different speeds after I've sweated my guts out from that. I'll, I'll go lift some weights for, for half an hour to an hour. Then I'll go shower and go get a drink and a bite to eat and go take a nap. <laughs> About a week before a fight, I'll lay in bed before I go to sleep every night and visualize me in, inside the cage fighting that guy. I try to picture that guy and what I'm going to try to do. And, <laughs> me knocking him out every time. When I lay down and think about it in bed every night, I just try to think about going in there and keeping my punches straight and tight and close. And I try to picture his, him, his face, and try to think what he's going to look like, try to think what he's going to do. Because I've, I've heard of their backgrounds, and so I know, I kind of know what to expect from these people. So I try, try to go over my mind and think and see what they're going to come out and throw at me and how I'm going to counter and react to work what I know to do best to win for me. I just go over it in my head a million times every night until I get to fight night. What I really try to do on fight days is I try to go out and carry my day like a normal day. Like I don't like to keep my mind distracted on thinking about the fight all day. I think if I think about the fight all day, it'll wear on me. And I don't like it to wear on me all day. So I just go out and I'll go to the mall, go shopping, go watch a movie or something. Just carry my day out like a normal day, hanging out with my friends. Just do my normal day because I feel like some days I've thought about a fight all day and it just wears on you. And I think that drains you out by, by the time the fight gets there. So I just go out and carry a normal day until fight time that night. In a big show for the very first time, the first thing that goes, in your, goes on in your head is, oh shit, I, I hope I don't get my ass kicked. <laughs> Um, second, the second thing it goes, um, a lot of times it's, you know, you think in your back of your mind is, you know, you want to make sure that you're, you've prepared yourself for the best and that you've, you've trained yourself the best way that you can. And, um, that's about it. When I hear the door shut and then the referee looks at me and asks if I'm ready and I say, yeah, and he asks if him, he's ready and he says, yeah, and, you know, it's time to go. Well, we come out after he says fight. I kind of fill my guy out for a little bit. See if he's going to throw punches. See if he's going to throw a wrestling shoot. Shoot at me with wrestling style. Or see if he's going to throw kicks. Try to be a tie boxer. I've seen it all. I met all different guys. So I fill them out and then let them do what they're going to do. And then I just react to what they're going to do and explode on them and do what I do normally. <laughs> throw a bunch of punches and take them out. I want a guy that's going to stand up and fight with me. I love to stand up and fight, so anybody that'll try to stand up and fight with me, that's, that's what I want, somebody to stand up and fight with me. Not somebody that's going to take me to the ground and try to wrestle the whole time. I like to stand up and fight, and so does the crowd likes to see people stand up and fight. Wrestlers seem to excel a lot faster in the sport than others. Uh, most fights end up on the ground, so wrestlers really do a lot better in the sport. You know, uh, they can get scholarships to go on and, and wrestle in college, but then once their, their college career is over, they really had no place to go unless they were, you know, uh, say heavyweights or 215 pounders, you know, they could go into the, the, the pro wrestling, uh, but it's a very competitive, you know, sport in itself, and you don't so much have to be such a great wrestler there as you do. They're looking for the body and the look also. So you could have guys that were really good wrestlers that, that don't fit their bill, you know. And uh, this sport has, has brought that 
full tilt. I mean, uh, the guys that were uh, even halfway decent in high school and didn't even go to college are, are doing real well in the sport. I don't think Trevor's mother will ever come and watch him fight. She's the kind of person that don't like to watch uh, boxing, much less uh, cage fighting. I talked to her about it, but uh, she tells me that she just won't watch his fights, that she couldn't stand to see uh, him get hit in the nose, much less his arm bent. So I don't believe that she'll ever watch it. I don't. She supports me, but she wish I wouldn't. <laughs> She just doesn't want to see her baby boy get hurt, she says. <laughs> she always calls me and tells me good luck. And call me afterwards and tell me how you did. But she said that she'll never watch. <laughs> as long as she helps support me and tells me good luck every time, that's good enough in my heart to, to push me through. So <laughs> she's not totally against me. <laughs> my name is Cynthia Kapaska. I'm here to watch my son fight. He comes from a pretty outgoing athletic family. Uh, my father was a track champion. His dad was second in state wrestling. And I guess I've always liked to be rowdy and kind of a tomboy. So Michael had me and his dad to grapple with the whole time he was growing up. And well, actually there's been no deaths in the MMA and there's rules. People think that it's all out like the wrestling on television where they're hitting each other with chairs and it's not. There's rules and he might get his nose broke or cauliflower ear, but I don't see him getting severely injured. I like fighting. I like to watch it. I always have. <laughs> and it's really exciting to watch my son. I don't want to see him lose ever, but I'm sure that day will come. Athletics is good for children, no matter if it's football, basketball, softball, anybody that has a focus in athletics, they're most likely not going to be smoking cigarettes, doing drugs, getting drunk. Um, sports is better than doing nothing in your life. And I was really worried about my son playing football. Kids have gotten their backs broken, their necks broken, uh, torn knees, torn elbows. It, football is high impact. I mean, running into people at full speed, I think it's more dangerous than the MMA. I think that college wrestling and Olympic wrestling is a lot more real wrestling. There's a lot of fake stuff on television. You see these people get hit, they never have a bruise, there's never any blood, and you see things done to them that would put a person in the hospital, so you know it's fake. I think it's a great sport, and I'm looking forward to watching my son fight tonight, and I hope he takes his second win. I brought my son up here for his first fight. I think like any parent would, nervous but excited. Um, you know, this is a choice he's made and, um, you know, we all have to learn. So, he was a pretty good kid, you know, normal teenage. Um, um, he'll kill me. I think of him as my gentle giant. He's got a gentle heart. He may be big, but he's gentle and respectful. I don't want to take him home in a cast or stitched up or anything, but, you know, we all make our choices, and this is one he wants to do, and he'll always regret it if he doesn't try it. Any sport really is valuable for a person, you know. It teaches them values and stuff, and... This is the sport he chose, you know. Um, too many parents force their kids into sports that they don't want to do, and this is what he wanted to do. I've been sporting him as a parent. Life is a learning experience. Um, our kids do sports that we don't want them to do, but um, we all learn from mistakes. And if they want to do this, at least they're into something, you know? They're not laying on a couch playing Nintendo. I know a lot of people think it's a terrible sport, but I've seen him in the last year take better care of himself than I ever have. Definitely wish him well, and I hope I bring him home in one piece. <laughs> My wife comes with me every time I fight. My wife and my children are behind me 100%. You know, this is something that we committed to do as a group, as a family, and uh, we'll do it, you know, to the bitter end. This is, this will be my life in the end, you know. This sport is, is everything that I will do for the next 20, 30, 40 years until I die. And uh, she supports me 100%.
there's always going to be people who want to ban it. I mean, absolutely. You know, there's there's religions that, that ban certain people from being part of the organization. There's, you know, organizations that ban other organizations from even doing business inside their, their trade zone. I mean, it's going to happen because it's competition. It's people that don't want it to, to get too much of a foothold. You look at boxing. You know, boxing went through the same thing. The only difference is that when boxing took hold in the United States and in Europe, it was during a time when, when the people were looking for something new. They needed something to take their minds off of what they were losing. You know, the fact that they, they didn't have food or they were in a depression. You can't ban it. You know, you, there's nothing you can really do about it because the sport's here to stay. It's, it's too ingrained. You look at what Pride and UFC is doing, and now you've got the WFA, you've got Icon Sports, Super Brawl, even the UCF. People are lining up outside the door. There's too much of a public call for it. My name is Jay Compton. I'm pretty active. Um, I like to fight. Um, I would always get in trouble with cops fighting on the streets. So I just started doing this. My parents got me into it. My son is fighting in this fight, Jake Compton. I think it's good because it keeps the kids in the ring fighting and not out on the streets fighting. I think it's an awesome sport. It makes kids have more self-control because they don't want to lose the fun that they have in practice and the glory and coming into this ring. This is something they all choose to do. No one forces them to do this. Would you rather have them fighting on the street, going to jail, or would you rather have them in their training doing what they're supposed to do with discipline behind the sport? Yep. Our son has willpower now for the first time ever to be able to say no. Too much training, not enough time to go out and get involved with things that are bad. He doesn't have time to get into any of that stuff. It keeps him out of trouble. And if he winds up getting into that trouble, he's done here, and he don't want to lose this. And that's something people probably don't realize, is that grades do count. This isn't just fighting. His trainer said his grades go down, he's done. So that's something everybody who's trying to ban this needs to realize. It's just like a school sport. I've been fighting for about six, seven months. I've been in trouble for a while. I, I think mainstream, it's just going to keep growing and growing and growing, and it's getting a bigger and bigger and bigger fan base, uh, which I think is great because the fans are who, who allows me to get paid. Um, and so, if, if it wasn't for the fans, I wouldn't be able to pursue my job. So, you know, I just hope that the fans keep standing behind it, getting more fans and uh, you know, allow me to, to pursue this as my career because it's a dream, dream come true. If the crowd doesn't like you, then the big shows aren't going to want you in their show because they want somebody that's going to put on a show and put people in the seats at their show. Because if you're putting people in the seats at their show, that's going to make them more money and it'll probably end up making me more money. So I try to put on the best show possible to try to make it to the bigger shows. Get recognition. I think that's the biggest thing. You please the crowd and people are gonna recognize you. So you need all the fans you can get. You know, if we continue to do what we do as athletes and promoters, the sport will grow, you can't stop it. You're talking about a sport that's as old as men. You know, hand-to-hand -hand combat or competitions have been around since the beginning of time. So, you know, this is always gonna be controversy. It's just a question of how you deal with it. <laughs> Trevor's grown up to be a real good man. I'm proud to be his father. Am I rock star in the entrance? What'd I say about that? <laughs> oh, what would I say about that? I play the rock star song here in Medford, Oregon because a lot of people kind of know who I am around here. The fans love it. Uh, it kind of rock star and Hollywood go together. I like to look good and put on a show for the crowd because that's who we're trying to please here, the crowd. Because if you don't have the crowd, you're not going anywhere. Without fans, we're nobody. Dream would be to travel all over the world and fight. Go see the world, fight for every, fight in Japan. That's what I'd really like to go fight, but I would love to be the world champion. <laughs> I think I could do it, I just gotta keep going. I think it'll take us, it'll take me as far as I, as I want to take myself. So, right now I'm full force, full heart in it, and I'm going to try to go as far as I can with it. And I'm going to try to stay with this sport for the rest of my life. And my dream, my ultimate goal is fight as long as I can until I can't fight no more and then become a trainer and train the rest of my life. Training younger students and younger guys. 
and getting them to where I once was. I think anybody can go all the way. It's just a question of how bad you want it. Nothing in life's free, man. If you want it, you make it happen because nobody's going to do it for you. Nothing's going to stop me until I reach my goal.